Hey guys, it's Truth Gucci Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In Monday's video, we talked a little bit about what we got this weekend at Grapevine, but in this video, we're going to talk about how we got it. Let's get this video started. So everybody, when they start coin dealing and going to shows, they're looking for opportunities to make money, opportunities to find rare coins for their clients. Um, and many times it takes several shows of just being consistent, showing up early, having the money ready, making sure your inventory is turned over at home. And then one day you'll get that opportunity. And so Friday of Grapevine was a very interesting day. What happened was I came in and I started looking around like I normally do. No one was there. And so there's this guy, which I, I'd never seen before. He was setting up coins and he was, he was basically off in the corner and he was putting out some really nice pieces. I mean, you saw that Barber half from last video. Um, you saw a few other coins that were just really tremendous. And so I started asking about coins. Another, another dealer came up. He started asking about coins and uh, you know, my inclination is let's just start buying. Let's just start going. And so I asked about uh, this 1877 seated half dollar. And uh, the, the seated half dollar, you know, was nice, had like a proof-like almost feel to it. Um, and so what had happened was I was saying, hey, you know, can we get any closer to gray sheet? The gray sheet's 665 on this coin. And so he ended up offering the coin to me at about 800. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. But the thing about it is that he was fun, he was going through gray sheet and he didn't know where a seated half dollar was. And that kind of was a little bit shocking to me. He just gave up and put the gray sheet back down and then I told him what gray sheet was. And then the dealer that next to me was looking at a coin and he was like, hey, how much do you want for this? He was kind of, you know, asking him. And once again, he picked up the gray sheet, had no idea what he was looking at, where he was going with it. And then another dealer came up he started looking at coins and then we, we were like, Hey bro, like where do you get these coins? Did you like, we were like worried. Did you steal these coins? Why are you set up here? A lot of questions to be asked. And basically he stated his name and the back, a little bit of backstory on it is that his dad just died and he was a, he was a dealer there and he brought all of his coins to sell. And I guess the estate was finished up. And they came to an agreement amongst the family that they wanted to sell these coins. And so what had happened was basically this guy was just setting up all these coins and he didn't know what gray sheet was. Like for most of the coins, he didn't know how to price the coins. It was just a giant cash grab. And so after a while, many dealers started to come in. It was, it was chaotic. Uh, I, they, he started, instead of putting the coins out, he was handing out boxes. And so uh, it, was, uh, it was very interesting because I would get a box. There was a dealer next to me that, that had boxes and there was a dealer next to me on this side that had boxes. I would hand my boxes to this dealer and that dealer would hand a box to the dealer over here, right? And so the, after the first few coins, you know, you could get stuff for gray sheet or you can get a little bit above gray sheet because they were that rare and that tough to get. And then dealers started to say to themselves, this kid has no idea what he's doing. This kid doesn't know how to price coins, this kid. Uh, and so basically, I saw many dealers go, I could price these coins for whatever I want to price them for. Um, I could get them 30% off, or 30 below sheet. I can get them 20% off sheet. Um, and we're not talking about coins that sell for sheet. We're talking about coins that sell for 30% over sheet. We're talking about coins that only have come up for auction once or twice in the past five years, those type of coins. And so I started handing boxes to this dealer and then that guy came around to grab the next box, right? And he said, no, I'm buying all these coins. So uh, for me, what I would do, and because I kind of want to sleep at night and be a decent person, is I would just look up gray sheet and then I would look up auction comps. If auction comps are 10% over gray sheet or what I wanted to pay, I would basically make 10 to 15% on a rare coin. And so me and Casey, we ended up spending $20,000, about half in cash and half in check um, with this gentleman the first day. And 
some of the dealers there showed up late and weren't didn't know what to you know didn't know what to do and so basically what I, I would do is I get those coins and I would go start offering them to other dealers I ended up selling most of them getting about seventeen thousand dollars back and I went to go back to that table and a lot of them like I said we're not at the stage where we were pricing stuff for gray sheet or above gray sheet we were at the stage of whatever a dealer can get a price on and if he can get it as low as possible they were just ripping this kid to shreds basically um and so it was a it was an opportunity but also it was extremely sad right people were taking up opportunities to um, basically buy every nice coin that they could for the cheapest that they could and so a big lesson that many of you guys should understand and learn is that if you have a collection if you are a dealer or you are a collector make sure you have a list of phone numbers make sure your kids know exactly what's going on with your collection because you can work your whole entire life for a collection that one of your kids if you didn't teach them right can go and squander it this kid could have literally spent the same amount of time instead of going to the show he could have literally just written up all these coins and drove them to heritage an hour and a half away or an hour away and he would have gotten I would say at least 50% more. He would have doubled his money from what he sold the coins for. And so a little bit of knowledge goes a long way. You can't hoard all that knowledge yourself. You have to pass that knowledge down to others that would really benefit from it. Because like I said, you work your whole life and then your kids don't know what to do with it and they go and take it to the person that will give them nothing, that will literally trample them. And, um, you know, there, it's uh, so the second day we came back and, you know, most of the dealers show up about 10 o'clock, 1030. They're getting their nap. They're getting their coffee, whatever. Uh, dealers are showing up at like 820, looking around, waiting for this guy, right? And so the second day was basically all the stuff that he had left that people passed on, kind of new age stuff, stuff that, you know, whatever. And so we ended up buying two coins that day from him that he was just setting out. There was a 1918 Walker and uh, a 1919D uh, Walker as well, CAC approved AU53. The rest of them were pretty much Morgan dollars and stuff that I really wouldn't want. And so I ended up buying those coins from him and it was a, overall it was pretty good, but I was ended up talking to a dealer and he was like, a Friday night kind of, you know, once Friday was kind of concluded, he spent about $30,000 at this table. He was pricing stuff over Gracie because that's kind of the right thing to do and that's what he does. He'll make like, 25 to 50 dollars on a on a thousand dollar coin because he knows they're nice he knows they'll move and he's very ethical but he's like i called my daughter on friday night and i'm like we need to sit down we need to find a few days because when i if anything ever happens to me i don't want that to i don't want this to be us basically and so what i would say there's a few kind of lessons to be learned here is that like I said, impart those things to your children because that's going to be the most important thing. You're going to buy stuff for a great price. They're going to go up in value. But if you don't pass that stuff on, you're not going to, you're going to be taken advantage of. Another thing also is that uh, if you're walking to a deal, always try to be super ethical. It's like, you know, we, we made 10% on some of the coins, 15%, maybe a little bit more. But at the end of the day, you're going to be able to sleep at night and also... Someone that took advantage of this guy is going to try to be taking advantage of every single other person when they run into them at, 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 at these shows. And one of these days, they're going to be in trouble. One of these days, they're going to be looked down upon and say, this person takes advantage of people. They hurt people. Uh, they don't care. They're, everything boils down to a dollar. It doesn't boil down to relationships. It doesn't boil down to um, community. It doesn't boil down to the hobby. It boils down to a dollar. That's that's all what motivates some people. And if you find those people, sometimes it's good to keep your distance because one day, you know, you're going to see them take advantage of this guy at the show. You're going to take a, see them take advantage of other people. And then one day they're going to want to take advantage of you. And you're not going to want those people in your life because they're running into, they're running into things that are so unethical that it almost can drag you into it. And so a very shocking weekend. I mean, um, the opportunity was great. We made some good money. Our, it's going to be our best month ever because of the things that we were able to acquire and sell. But there's a lot of things that also just scare the living daylights out of me and a lot of the dealers. And so have this video as a food for thought on how to be ethical and also 
what you should tell your children. But thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please leave a like. Comment your thoughts on this whole situation. What would you do? Um, uh, subscribe if you're new. We've got new videos coming out every single week. The Freedom Coin Show podcast is also um, coming out this Friday at 3 o'clock. We're also going to be including two more coin stories for this weekend. Um, on Friday, we're going to be talking about something that was stolen and one of our greatest coin sales ever on one coin. We made a lot of money on it because it was so beautiful. So stay tuned for that, and we will see you guys in the next video.